Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. And today I'm going to be doing a video on contour lines as they relate to topographical maps. Now a lot of people when they first look at a topographical map are confused by the odd shape of all the lines on a topographical map. And they understand that it has to do with the terrain of the landscape, but they don't know how to interpret it. So I'm here to try to explain it to you in terms of this small pond near my house. Imagine if I walked along the shoreline of this pond all the way around, every little nook and cranny back to where I started. I would have walked what's called a contour line. And this is what you see when you look at a topographical map. All the curved uh, edges, the shoreline of this pond are literally a contour line. Now, as this pond rises and lowers with the weather, either a heavy rain or a drought, the water will rise. The shape of the lake will change. What might be a curve here might be curved this way. So imagine, if you will, that you're looking at a topographical map from up above, which is what all topographical maps do. You're looking straight down. If I drew my path around this lake, I would draw one contour line. So maybe that helps you understand what a contour line is in the context of a topographical map. As the water rises and lowers, the shape of this changes. It doesn't mean that this will always be an outer you know, curve this direction. They, it may be flat, and when it gets over to here, it will curve this direction. And the flatter the land is, the farther apart the contour lines are. As the land gets steeper, the closer they are. So I'm going to take you to a photograph that I took several years ago on a vacation in Wyoming and hopefully try to explain to you with that photograph in conjunction with a topographical map of that area. Hopefully this will explain contour lines and how to better understand them when you're looking at a topographical map. So let's take a look at the photograph and the map, shall we? Now, this photograph that I took in eastern Wyoming at what is called Guernsey State Park, and I'll put a link to it and the GPS coordinates of where we're talking about in the description. I'm going to use this in conjunction with a topographical map of the area to explain what contour lines are and how to interpret them. But the biggest problem most people have with contour lines is the fact that there's a difference in perspective. We as humans are used to looking at the world just like this on a horizontal plane around us. We are used to looking out, where a topographical map is always looking straight down. And that's a very confusing point. Um, it's impossible for us to come up with a printed map to show you what the world will look like as you move around because you would need a different map for every location you go to. If I moved just a mile or two up the road, I would need a different set of maps. A topographical map, however, has one perspective and that's always straight down. So we need to learn how to interpret the lines, the contour lines on this map as they relate to what we're looking at out in the real world. So this is the topographical map of the area that I'm talking about. And the photograph was taking looking east. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the topographical map so as you're looking up on the map, which you're actually looking a little bit south of due east, you're also going to get the same perspective when you look at the photograph. And here they are lined up. Now, when you get those two lined up, we can start interpreting these topographical lines or these uh, contour lines on the topographical map as they match up with the uh, landscape that you're actually looking at. Understand that typically that the closer the lines are together, the steeper the landscape is. The farther apart they get, the flatter the ground is. Very simple concept to understand. But let's put that into perspective. Let's compare this topographical map with this photograph and see what we can line up based on how we read the contour lines on the topographical map, shall we? What I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the topographical map, which will take up the top two-thirds of the image, with the actual photograph of the landscape that shows in the topographical map, 
at the bottom third. And hopefully this explanation will help you understand how to read contour lines. The red V shape that you see in the top center is roughly the field of view that the camera has taken in the photograph. So everything inside of that red V is going to be in the photograph and everything to the left and right is outside the photograph. So we're going to just deal with what is inside the photograph. The first thing I'm going to point out is, like I said, the shoreline of a body of water is basically a contour line. And I'm going to use this as a reference line where the closest point of the land on the far side of the lake that's towards the camera lines up with the contour line on the topographical map. And you can see those lined up with the blue line. The point of Bremer Point, or the very edge of Bremer Point, on, as shown on the map, shows on the right side of the image. And you can see that it's relatively flat on the top because the lines in the topographical map are spaced rather far apart. And as you move to the left, you can see that they get closer together. So that shows you that it gets steeper as you go to the left. There's another bay, again, using the water line as a contour line. There's a little bay or something like that uh, back behind that flat area in the dead center of the photograph. You can see that in the background of the photograph and how that lines up with the contour lines shown on the map. As I said, the closer the lines are together, the steeper the terrain is going to be. And you can see that uh, here are some lines that not only are very, very close together, but literally stacked on top of each other. And you can see that that translates into a vertical face. So this isn't something that you're going to hike. This is something you're going to need rock climbing equipment for. And you can tell that just by looking at the uh, topographical map that it isn't going to be easy to hike up or down that face of that cliff. On the lower left is a, you can see that the ground comes from the far left of the photograph and is relatively flat. And you can see that in the topographical map because the lines are quite a ways away. But then as you get towards the center of the photograph, you can see how they get closer and closer together. The lines are closer together. You can see how the ground just drops off as from going from left to right in the photograph. In the far distance, you can see that that feature that has the vertical cliffs on it, back behind to the left, you can tell it's very flat by looking at the topographical map. And when you look at the photograph, you can see it is relatively flat up there. So it might be difficult to hike up to there, but once you get up there, it's going to be relatively easy because the lines are far apart. One way you might go up to that location is follow this uh, ravine. Anytime you see contour lines like this in a V shape and they all follow a V shape and the center of the V is are pretty much on a line, it may be a random line, you're looking at a watershed. You're looking at a riverbed or a creek or some sort of watershed. And you can see this valley in the photograph. So you know if you came up that from the bay and turned left, you'd be going up a little valley. And you can see that in the topographical map as well as in the photograph. If you went up a little bit further, you'd be going straight up Black Canyon and the creek there. And you can see that it might be an easy trip to start with because the lines are relatively far apart. But as you get further and further along, keep going up, you see that the lines get closer and closer together, which means you're going to slow down before you get to the top of that. And you can see in the photograph that bears that out. You can almost see some cliffs, some very, very short uh, cliffs in the, towards the top of the hill there. So it may not be very easy to get to the top of that hill. Again, as the lines are very, very far apart, you have a relatively flat piece of ground. And you can this is borne out in the uh, little meadow there that you see in the photograph. Be very, very easy hiking there. 
Another little bay that you can see by using uh, the water's edge as a contour line. There are also a couple of small hills on the very far left of the photograph. You can see that uh, there is a small peak there. As you start to get into smaller and smaller circles, you know you're getting closer to the top of the hill or mountain or whatever feature that you're looking at on the topographical map. And you can see that in the left side of the photograph. There is a slight hill there. And right dead center of the photograph towards the top, if you were to walk that blue line from the rivers or the edge of the of the lake, you can see that it would be relatively easy. You'd cross the road, you go uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill, and then you'd cross the creek, and then you start going up and up and up, and it gets steeper and steeper and steeper as you go up that. And once you get to the top, it would be relatively easy. And finally, you can see that the face of this uh, rock feature that is towards you is very very steep and almost vertical but off to the left you can see how it uh, tapers off it is not as steep so even though the lines are not quite close together they're not stacked up so you can see that to the left of that blue line things taper off it would be a rather difficult climb for most people it looks like to be about a 40 45 degree angle it still could be done but would be very very difficult So hopefully, after all that, you understand contour lines as they appear on a standard topographical map. So you can interpret those without even being in the area. You can take a map of a place you want to visit, take a look at it, say, here's the direction I want to hike, but if I go this way, it's going to be very, very rough going because there's a lot of steep hills and even some cliffs, where if I go this way, it's going to be a lot easier because it's a lot flatter. Now, contour lines aren't going to tell you everything you need to know. They aren't going to tell you what the ground is like. They don't tell you whether it's going to be muddy or sandy or soggy, whether uh, it's overgrown with brush and lots of uh, obstacles in the way like rocks and things like that but it is going to give you an idea of how smooth how steep how rugged the terrain is so armed with that knowledge hopefully you can go forth be safe out there and i'll see you out there on the trail